believe in this man of God. I believe in his ministry. I bless his ministry. I bless the word that he's going to speak today. And I bless your ears to hear what God is going to say through this man today. God is good. And I believe he's got a rhema word for us this moment, if we're willing to hear it. So Dr. Norm, God bless you. And just unload. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I've been given the challenge to continue from where Pastor left off. Uh, we've been talking about, um, amen. This is not rated, okay? R. <laughs> Nevertheless, the kids can move to their class. Amen. We've been talking about uh, the battle, winning the battle. Yes. And so I'm going to talk a little bit within those confines. I'm going to be talking about the battle of the ages. Amen. How many of us know that there's a battle that's going on, spiritually speaking? And whatever happens in the spirit is a reflection of what happens in the natural. Things are first spiritual before natural. And so um, when you study the book of Daniel, there was a time where there was a lot of turmoil in the realm of the spirit as Daniel began to pray. And um, after 21 days of fasting, an angel appeared. Gabriel appeared and said that from the first day you began to pray, he said that uh, the Lord had heard you, but the Lord had sent me. But he said that the prince of Persia, or, or the demon, demonic spirit that controls Persia, he said, resisted me and didn't allow me to bring the message for 21 days. And the Bible says that after that, he said that, uh, um, that's not where I'm going to be preaching from, but he said that after that, he said, Michael came and Michael is going to fight. And the Bible says after that, the, the prince of Persia fell, the Persian kingdom fell, and then another kingdom took over. The Grecian kingdom took over. So just as there was war in the spirit, in the natural, things were turned around. Amen. Many of us don't know that there are a lot of spiritual things that happen in the spirit atmosphere that affect the physical. And that's why as a child of God, you cannot live from the physical to the spiritual. You must function from the spirit into the physical. Do you understand what I'm talking about? If you are afflicted, you must see that thing first spiritual if you're going to overcome. Because you can't medicate the devil out. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Hallelujah. If the devil is behind it, you can't medicate him out. You can medicate yourself and keep yourself <laughs> drowsy while he's afflicting you. And when the, when the medication wears off, the devil is going to tell you, I'm still here. <laughs> Hallelujah. So as we begin to understand that this thing is a battle, and the most important thing is that you must understand that it didn't start yesterday. It started ages ago. And so we have the victory only through the Lord Jesus. Amen. So let's start, and this may put a little bit of trouble to those people who are up there. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. That's why I don't like giving them scriptures because at the end of the day I'll go off. Genesis 1 28 is a beautiful verse where God begins to speak to Adam or man. And he tells him to have dominion. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. To subdue means that there is some form of opposition or some form of disagreement. And so when God said subdue it, it means that there was already an enemy on the loose. Do you understand? Because if there's nothing to subdue, then why would he tell them to subdue? Why did he give them dominion if there was something that would oppose Hallelujah. And so we believe, and most theologians believe, that before this happened, or before God spoke this word, the enemy was already on the loose. Hallelujah. Satan had already fallen. And so one of the things I'm supposed to be talking about is the, the angelic realm and the things that happen around us. So you must understand that there has been about three, most people talk about two or three different seasons when angels fell. Number one. Number two, you must understand the difference between angels and man. The Bible tells us that man was created. I think in Psalm 8 it says, and we were created a little lower than the angels. And uh, you may not understand the reason why, but the thing is that because man is created a little lower than angels, when a man falls or sins or falls away from the grace of God, he can be restored. How long did it take for man to be restored? From the time Adam fell until the coming of Jesus. Almost 6,000 years. Can you imagine how long it took for God's plan to come through? Now, when angels fall, because they are created in perfection, they fall in perfection. When they fall, there is no redemption. 
That's why Satan cannot repent. Hallelujah. That's why when demons are there, we cast them out. You don't talk with them. You don't have meetings with them. <laughs> they have no mercy. Do you understand? Hallelujah. Interestingly, even before angels fall, the Bible calls them ministering spirits. It means that they don't have the, 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 the capacity to love. Do you know that? You never hear where it says the angels say, oh, we love you, Father. No. All they say is holy. They, they, they just see the glory of God. But they don't have the capacity to love. Do you understand? Amen. So you never see an angel saying that we love God. They don't have that capacity. All they know is God gives them orders and they have the decision to do it. If they refuse to do it, judgment falls on them and they are condemned. Hallelujah. And the interesting thing about the angels, when they fall, they don't just fall. They continue to fall. Which means that they get darker and darker and darker and darker and darker. Do you understand? And that's why uh, uh, Lucifer is still falling. He's still getting darker. That's why the days are getting darker. Do you understand? When the Bible says in the last days, days the, 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 there shall be a lot of darkness. It simply tells you it cannot be more dark than the one who's making it dark. Do you understand? Things cannot be more wicked than the one who makes it wicked. So when angels fall, they become more and more and more and more and more wicked. And their only purpose is to destroy God's, God's seed or the child of God or the human race. That's their intention. Amen? Hallelujah. So as we study the word, there's nothing like good witch and bad witch. They're all demons. They're all wicked. And they're all fallen. And so if you dabble around with them, you will be, de you will be destroyed. Do you understand that? Hallelujah. We will not go down that road route right now. Amen. So God tells him to have dominion. And then in chapter 3, verse 15, this was after the fall. So man falls and disobeys God. Man was the one who was given the command. God told him, don't eat of the tree. Amen. And um, Satan comes through the snake. He inhabits the snake. Do you know devils can do, the, the, the devil can live in, in animals. Do you know that? <laughs> he lives in pigs. He can live in pigs too and in dogs. Amen. Anyway, he comes as a snake and um, he deceives the woman. Hallelujah. Who intends uh, uh, lures her husband to make that same wrong decision. The Bible tells us that Adam was not deceived. Eve was deceived. So Adam knew what he was doing. Amen. And so judgment fell the moment the man took it. It didn't fall when the woman took it because the, the, con the, the command was given to the man. So the moment he takes it, then they fall. Can you imagine how he felt? This was a man before that time. He couldn't age. We don't know how many, how many ages. What happened between before they were, when they were created till this point? Because he couldn't age. Time did not start counting. He didn't begin to age until he fell. So this could have gone for thousands of years. We don't know. Amen. And all that dinosaur stuff you can throw in there. But we don't know how long he lived. Because he did not age until he sinned. And after he sinned, he suddenly realized something was wrong. He began to feel things. He began to feel symptoms in his body. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Before that time, even if you took stones and threw on top of him, Adam would take them off. Do you understand? Some of you watch that Hollywood stuff. You know, where they cut the man and the thing starts healing back. That was how Adam was. He could not be destroyed. Hallelujah. He was an eternal being. Glory to his name. So now Adam has sinned. And God starts out by cursing the serpent. And his curse to the serpent actually is very important. He says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed. Stop there. Now, when you study the Bible, you need to understand what the Bible says and what the Bible does not say. So, when you study the Bible, you will never see where it mentions the seed of Sarah or the seed of, uh, 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 of Abigail or the seed of any woman. Because women do not make seed. Do you understand? The seed is the word sperma, sperm, where sperm comes from. So, man is the one who makes seed. So, it talks about the seed of Abraham, the seed of Jacob. Do you understand? So when it says the seed of the woman, it should, you should pause and ask a question. What seed are we talking about? <laughs> We're talking about a woman giving birth to a child without natural intervention. That's what it's trying to talk about. So we're talking about the seed. That's Jesus Christ. Do you understand? Because Jesus Christ was not born of the seed of, of man. Hallelujah. So the woman provided him a physical body. So how was Jesus born? Through the word of God, the seed of God's word. So that was the agency with which the moment she said, as thou hast spoken, be it done unto me. The moment she said that, she conceived. 
in her womb. Hallelujah. And that was supernatural. Glory to his name. Glory. Hallelujah. And so, as we begin to look at this, let's move to Genesis chapter 6, which is the main place I want to talk out of. As we begin to talk about the angels and how, where we are today and what is going on today. Amen. So, as we begin to pray and we begin to study the word, you begin to have an understanding. And everything we're sharing about is not just story, but it's in the light of redemption. I believe the Bible is not history. It's his story. It's about Jesus. Amen. There is history in there, but it's not about history. There's good information in there, but it's not just about information. It's about the, uh, the man Jesus. Glory to his name. Are we together now? Hallelujah. So we know in Genesis, there was the fall. The enemy was already present. And, and when you read Revelation chapter 12, verse 6, it gives us a picture of what happened. The Bible talks about how Satan took a third of the angels, deceived a third of the angels, and made them and turned them against God. And were cast out of the presence of God and were cast down to the earth. Hallelujah. I believe at the, sin, at the fall of man, these, these fallen angels were released back into the earth the moment man fell. Amen? Hallelujah. So let's go on. Genesis chapter 6. Are we together? It says, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. So first of all, men began to multiply. In fact, scientifically speaking, they say that there, there were probably about 36 to 30, about 40 billion people on the face of the earth from the time of uh, when Adam sinned until the time of the flood. Do you understand? How come are they more than us today? Because they lived longer. Can you imagine living for nine, 900 years? You're going to see your grand, grandson, your great-grandson, your great-great-grandson. You're going to see every kind of grand, great-grand, grand-grand. You're going to see all of them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to his name. So man began to multiply, and so there were, there were, there were, man basically filled the earth. So there were more people back then than even now. Even now we're crying, oh, there's no food because there's too many people. It's a big lie. Amen. Some people have too much. Like America has too much. That's why, why, why you know, we're dying of obesity. Amen. Some people have too much, and others have nothing. Amen. But God has made everything available to, to, to meet the needs of everybody. Hallelujah. So all the scarcity and all that, it's all man-made. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Let's move on. The second thing I want you to see in this verse, the next verse, it says, And the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. So we'll talk a little bit about the sons of God, because as we study the Bible, we come to realize this is not talking about natural men. This is talking about angels, angelic beings, angels that are normally sent. They're specific angels that are sent to, sent to watch over the earth. So just as in the satanic kingdom, you have angels or, or demonic fallen, let me not use the word demons because we'll talk about that. You have fallen angels that, that, that take over regions and control nations. Amen. Also, there are on God's side angels that are sent to control or to watch over, let me not use the word control, but to watch over and to affect and, and to, to, you know, to watch how man functions. Amen. And to influence what is done based on the decisions that man makes. Do you understand? So when, uh, when you come to a certain territory and everybody is living an alternate lifestyle, it's a re it's a, there's a spirit that's controlling that. There's a fallen angel that's controlling that region. And you come to another region, you leave Southern California, and you come to Chicago, and everybody wants to shoot themselves. It's a spirit of a, a different spirit that's functioning there. Have you ever traveled from one place to another, and you're wondering, what on earth is going on in this place? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. You've just shifted from under one rule to another rule. And that's why you, you sense that. So just as... Uh, Satan has set up his kingdom, kind of trying to copy God's kingdom. God had angels that, that watched over and brought messages to man. Amen. And, you know, when you go through, we'll look at a few verses. Good example. This is more of a kind of what I'll teach in the Bible study, not maybe on Sunday morning, but this is what we're dealing with now. Job 1.6, Job 2.1, Job 38 verse 7. Those three, three verses help us and give us an understanding of who the son, when it says the sons of God are. Amen. Hallelujah. You can put them up. So Job, Job 1, 6 tells us how the sons of God gathered before God, and the Bible says that Satan was in their midst. So uh, Satan could not be there except he had that same rank. Do you understand? So when it talks about the sons of God, it's talking about angelic beings. 
So they meet before God. They come before God. There's what we call the, 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 the determinate counsel of God, where they meet to make decisions. Hallelujah. If Satan is just a, a, you know, a, a borrowed person that God is using. Amen. Who better to use than to find what is wrong in people? Amen. Glory to God. His assignment or his place is to accuse. And Satan, I, God asks him, say, where are you coming from? He says, I'm going through and through the earth and walking about it. Amen. Hallelujah. The next verse, if you put that up, shows us another beautiful picture. Job 2 verse 1. I think it's the same thing. And, and there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself. So the Bible didn't say Satan came there to accuse the sons of God. The Bible said he also came to present himself. Do you understand? So we can pick scripture after scripture that proves to you that when it talks about the sons of God, it's talking about angelic beings. Amen. So the Bible says that angelic beings began to see. They came down for their assignments, but they began to look at the daughters of men. That's why I tell men, I don't care how much, how gifted you are or how anointed you are. If you keep looking at the wrong thing, if angels fell, you will fall too. Hallelujah. I don't care if you're as anointed as Samson. <laughs> uh, there's something God put in women. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's wisdom I've just released there. Some of you don't know what I've just said now. Glory to his name. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, that verse says that the sons of God who are supposed to be, who are angelic beings, who are supposed to be bringing messages and doing God's will, and we're going to look at the actual scripture, calls them watchers. That's what they're called. They're called watchers. They're angels that watch over the affairs of men. They began to leave what God asked them to watch and began to watch something else. Okay? And so the Bible says that there was an exchange. Hallelujah. There was a sexual exchange. You know, some people, some theologians believe the exchange, there was an exchange for technology and, and different things. But the Bible tells us there was some kind of sexual exchange. There was an alteration in the human genome. A mixture of genes. Hallelujah. And as you study the Bible, every time there is a mixture of genes or men begin to play around with the human genome, judgment is around the corner. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because if you study the Bible, if you study the, 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 the book of Revelation, you understand that the, 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 the introduction of the Antichrist and some of those things are just going to be a manipulation of the human genome. And judgment always comes whenever that happens. I know right now we're playing around and people are creating kids that ha are, are resistant to cancer in China. They're all doing kind of crazy things. Amen? Just, just to tell you that we're in the last days. Are you hearing me? You're all quiet. Glory to his name. Amen. Now in the lab, you can produce fish that have stripes like zebra. You know, we're, we're playing around with the genome. But it's, we're not far from God's judgment. Do you hear me? Yep. Hallelujah. So let's begin to look at that scripture and you'll begin to understand what I'm talking about. Okay? Verse 2 says that the sons of, of God saw that the daughters of men, they were fair. And they took them wives all which they took. Now, next verse. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. For that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. So when you read the Bible, you need to understand, why did God make this statement? Somebody said, oh, it was just men that were marrying women. No, no, no. If men were just marrying women, God would not have opened his mouth to make this statement. Do you understand? This statement in verse 3 is a reflection of what happened in verse 2. That something was violated. A, a, a principle was violated in verse 2. And so God comes out and says, man is living too long. And because of his long life, he has nothing to do than to imagine and create evil. Hallelujah. And so he says, I'm going to shorten his life to 120 years. Hallelujah. Very rare to see people live up to 120. Amen. You see, the re one of the reasons why, you know, when, when, when God told Adam, he says, in the day that you sin. He says, if you eat of this, he said, in that day you will what? Surely what? Die. And we know that Adam lived for 900 and how long did he live? 900 and what? He said 938. Okay, he lived 900 and something years. Because the Bible tells us that a thousand years is like a day to the Lord. So when he told him you would die in that day, that's what he meant. Hallelujah. So he died in the day. Not, uh, nobody lived beyond up to a thousand years. Do you notice it? They all died in that day at 900. Many of them died. Even Noah was even early. He died at 600. Most of them died before the thousand years. That's why I said Jesus is going to come. When Jesus comes, the Bible calls it the day of the Lord. He's going to, he's going to reign for a, what? A thousand years. 
So what Adam could not live, the second Adam will come and live for those thousand years on the earth. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. And so God brings judgment, but this judgment actually for me, I think is kind of mercy too. Because he realized if this man continues to live for 900 years, you know, he's, he's likely to continue to disobey. Maybe if I shorten his years, he will live his purpose and then he will come up to heaven and be with me. And so that shortening probably is more of actually God's mercy. Hallelujah. Because the longer you have doing nothing, the longer the more trouble you give. Do you understand? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Next verse. There were giants in the earth in those days. So everything must precede the next. So after the sexual exchange, the Bible now tells us what is happening. Why are there giants? <laughs> Why would humans grow beyond what they're normally supposed to grow except their, their, their genes have been tampered with? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Because most people read the scripture without knowing. So there are giants in the earth. Where did the giants come from? There's a mixture of humans with these angelic beings. So they give birth to giants. You know, when you read the, the Greek story, that's all, you know, they, they twist it in the Greek story. And they tell you about all these half men, half gods, and all that. It, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a twisting of the real story. You don't need to go watch all those movies. It's all in the scriptures. Hallelujah. You, all those Hercules and all those people who were, they were all, uh, uh, they were a mixture. What would the Bible calls Nephilim. They were a mixture of humans with angels. So they had strength. They had strength more than a natural man. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Are we together? So the Bible tells us that there were giants in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare them children, to them the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown. So what is the story? These angels come down and they begin to mix with women. They begin to have sex with women. Let me put it that way. And they begin to give birth to these men that are men but not really men. They are, they are <laughs> what we call Nephilim. They are a mixture. Hallelujah. And so the earth or the human race is polluted. That's what I want us to understand. Hallelujah. You see, the problem is this. When an angel falls, the angel is condemned. And God chains them in the lower parts of the earth because we'll look at those scriptures. When a man falls, the man is condemned. Except he seeks redemption through Christ. My question to you, when half angel and half man mix up, when they die, what happens to them? Where, where do they go? Do they go to God? God didn't create them. Do you understand? <laughs> that may be the origin of where the demons come from. Amen? But let's move on. It says, and there were giants in the earth in those days and also after, because we know that before the flood, God wiped out most of the, most of the, of the, human, or most of the race back then. And as you study the scripture, you come to realize, because when you read, when you listen to Hollywood, it makes it look like God was wicked. You know? He just got up and said, I feel like destroying. Let's destroy everybody. There was a reason why God had to wipe out that race. Because if the entire human race was mixed with angels, everybody would have been condemned. Do you understand? Yes. Because angels don't have redemption. And so, these wicked angels, their intention was to corrupt the human seed. Because they know that if you, uh, an angel and a human mix, there's no redemption. And they knew that the seed of the woman was coming. And so they said, we are going to corrupt that seed. Because there is no way God will bring forth his son into the world if, he's gonna, if the entire world is mixed with angels. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That's why I'm calling it the battle of the ages. You need to understand that this thing has been going on. So these angels realized that, look, if we can corrupt the human race, it is impossible for God to redeem man. We want man to perish the way we are going to perish. We know that our, our faith is sealed up, but we're going to make sure man goes with us. That was his intention. Hallelujah. So when you begin to understand this, you begin to, you begin to thank God for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because otherwise, no, no hope for you. If whatever, for whatever cause you came into this world, half human and half angel, there's no hope for you. Hallelujah. And that's why Jesus had to come. Now let's move on. Now, it tells us about these giants that many of them were, were renowned. And those were many of the stories that came forth back then, like Hercules and all these people who did great and mighty feats. It was because of where they came from. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Next verse. It says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that 
every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Stop there. If you have ever been under some kind of demonic possession, I don't like using the word possession, because that means the devil takes over you completely, or obsession, or influence. If you've ever had, if you've ever, if you've ever been set free from that thing, you know that what only makes this possible is demonic possession or obsession or control. For when they, they begin to torment your thoughts, to so your thoughts are continuously. It didn't say today they are good, tomorrow they are continuously. For your thoughts to be totally, continuously wicked, it takes demonic, it takes the devil to take over, demons to take over. Hallelujah. And that's why I believe in this scripture, it gives us an insight to what was happening. Because as these half humans and whatever were dying, or were, were dying with age, I believe many demons were being released. Because demons are different from fallen angels. Fallen angels function in the high places. Demons seek human bodies to express themselves. Hallelujah. They seek. And so even when you study the New Testament, the, the word for demons is different from the fallen angels. They always talk about the devil and his angel. When he talks about demons, it's a different thing. Hallelujah. The Greek word for demon is daemon. Damien. Don't name your child Damien. Do you hear me? Don't just pick any nonsense and call your child. Why would you call your child a demon? Most people don't know. Oh, my child is also a Damien. Oh, hallelujah. No, 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 no. Ask yourself. Why don't just name your child any name? Figure out what it means before you call them that. Don't call your child a demon and expect him to be an angel. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Glory. So we need to understand from the scripture that these angels fell and began to corrupt the human race. Amen. And God had to, to judge man, first of all, by, by reducing the amount of time he lived. And second of all, that was where he had to wipe out the entire race and save only Noah. So when you read, uh, uh, you know, let's go on. Amen. Genesis chapter 6, same chapter, hallelujah, verse 11, okay, verse 8, it says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. He was a just man and a perfect, and perfect in his generation. Now, when you look at the Hebrew word there, it doesn't necessarily mean perfect in terms of behavior. It means perfect in terms of being whole. Of being pure, like a pure seed. So Noah was the last person I believe that was alive that had not been mixed with these demonic, uh, these these fallen angels. Do you understand? So the word the Bible uses the word tanyim, which means to be a whole stock. Amen. Not half horse, half donkey, or anything. Just pure horse breed. That's what I'm talking about. So Noah was the last man to be alive, and that was why God preserved him, not because of you know how righteous he was but because he was the last that was left alive. Hallelujah. So you begin to see what happened through the ages, how God was trying to preserve the human race. Amen. And, and why, so after the flood, why did these giants still show up? Because we know a lot of them showed up in the days of David. It, they showed up because there must have been another fall because the Bible tells us that after the flood, amen, in the verse, I think it was verse three I just read. It says there were, in, there were giants in those days before the flood and after the flood when the sons of God came on to the daughters of of men. And so there was another corruption that took place after the flood, and that was why after the flood you still see giants like Goliath and all that, and, and many in the Bible. Hallelujah. But what I'm trying to show you is the, the, the office of these, these angels, and what God has called us to do, and how God has called us to function. Are we together? Hallelujah. And there's a lot of study, and many of you are looking at me because you don't open your Bibles that much. Let's go to First Peter chapter 3. Verse 19, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 14. And then we'll look at Jude 6. Jude, verse 6. Okay, so let's go through all those verses. I think you have them up there. Just put them on. Hallelujah. Go a verse before that. A verse before that. So we can see that. And the angels which kept not their first estate. You see that. But left their own habitation. He hath reserved in everlasting chains. Under darkness. Unto the judgment of the great day. Next place. Hallelujah. So this talks about angels that left not their first estate. When you read the verses down, it always mentions it in line with Noah, the days of Noah. Okay? For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell. That word hell there is the word Tartarus. It's believed to be the lowest part of hell where these angels are kept in chains. 
God will not release them. If God releases them, <laughs> we'll be in trouble. Hallelujah. And deliver them unto chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Next one. He says, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. This is talking about Jesus. So when Jesus Christ went to the lower parts of the earth, after victory, he went and declared. He didn't preach for the purpose of salvation. That word preach there talks about a proclamation or a herald to let them know that he came and he conquered. Because their purpose was to block the Messianic seed. Do you understand? So those angels, they knew. If we can corrupt the whole of human race, it's finished for them. God cannot come into, come, come into the world. Because God is not going to come in through a demon. Do you understand? And, and so when Jesus had conquered, he went down there to tell them. He said, look, guys, you guys failed. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. And so all these verses always talk in reference to the days of Noah. And so a lot of things happened back then. And, and when you look at verse 11, it says that the earth was corrupt. It didn't just say man was corrupt. It says the earth itself was corrupt. Meaning that even the animals that were walking, they, were, they had been corrupted. They had been polluted. They had been defiled. Hallelujah. A lot of terrible things were going on then. Hallelujah. And that was why God at that time had to judge the world. Amen. Now I want, us to show, I want to show you a few things about the watcher angels. Daniel chapter 4. Verse 13. Are we together? Daniel 4.13. It's a little bit difficult because it's such a long story. Okay. So, um, I'll give you just a, a, an understanding of what's going on here. So, he, this is uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. And in this vision, he sees a big tree. And the tree fills the earth. And then an, an, an angel speaks out of heaven and says, cut down the tree. You know, and let the stump, you know, you know, uh, be showered with rain from heaven and all that, and all that. Amen. So, this was what he was trying to describe. He says, and I saw the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and a holy one came down from heaven. Next verse. No, go back. I, I want one verse after that. Let's just read into it. Verse 14. Can you do verse 14? And he cried aloud and said, Thus, hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruits, and let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from under his branches. Next verse. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass and in tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. Next verse. That's the one we wanted. And let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over. Next verse. This matter is by the decree of the watchers, and the demand by the word of the holy ones. To the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdoms of men. And give it, give it to whomsoever he will. And set it up over it, the basis of men. So here is Nebuchadnezzar. He is, you know, God is warning him a year ahead of time. So he has, in this dream, he has a tree that's cut down. Which was, remember when we taught in, in the Bible study, we said trees always refer to men. Okay, when, we, when you have a dream about a tree, often it refers to men. Men, I see men as what? Trees. And he shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water, and his leaves shall not wither. Hallelujah. So always, the Bible calls us trees of righteousness. So trees always talk of men. So he has this dream, and in this dream, it's, it's actually representing him, and he's cut down. Amen. Hallelujah. And he hears a voice from heaven, or an angel speaking, what we call a watcher angel. So these angels were called to watch over the affairs of men. And to, to influence governments. These are the angels. These are good angels. Amen? Not the ones that fell. The ones that fell no longer have that office. Hallelujah. But what I want you to see is that it says this decree is by the watchers. Because I, I always used to see angels as, you know, almost like robots. They, God tells them what to do and they do it. No, 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 no. They have some leeway. They have some authority. Hallelujah. They have authority. Which means that they can make decisions. Hallelujah. They can make decisions. They're not robots. They can make decisions. Amen? <laughs> you know the story of David where, where God told him, um, give him three options when he was numbering the people. 
God gave him three options. He said, you run from your enemies for three years, or famine will come, or I will send, uh, you know, pestilence. So God, God, David said, let me fall into the hands of the Lord. I don't want to fall in the hands of men. And, and so God sends an angel that just stands over the land and people are dying. And God himself has to, the Bible says God had to restrain the angel. That's why I said they have no capacity to love. And they're like, oh, it feels so bad. God felt it. The angel felt nothing. So he had, to tell the, uh, he had to tell the angel, stay your hand. Or else the angel would have wiped out the entire nation. That's how ruthless they are. Hallelujah. When you give them orders, they just go and they start, they start scattering. Amen. No compassion. That's why the devil has no pity. He's a, he's a fallen angel. He has no mercy. So maybe if I cry a little bit, this problem will go. No, it's not going anywhere. The only power we have is in the word of God. In Jesus Christ. The devil has no, what? Mercy. Even though he's promised that he will do this for them, they're all wasting their time. Amen. Because he's a prisoner. You can't promise. You can't be a prisoner and promise people freedom. Do you understand? <laughs> he can't promise them anything because he's already, it's just a question of time. Hallelujah. So we see that these people had, these angels had authority. Amen. And the Bible called them watchers. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse uh, 31 as we, we round out. Amen. We'll continue. Hopefully we'll continue next week if we have that opportunity. Amen. Hallelujah. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. So he had a dream and God gave him one year to repent. Amen. And Daniel interpreted the dream and told him that God has given you a whole year to turn things around. And after a whole year, he didn't repent. He came out on top of his house and was mentioning words of pride and said, Oh, my kingdom, behold, this is all done by my hand. And the Bible said, while it was in his mouth, hallelujah, not in his heart, in his mouth. Because if it's in the heart, it would eventually come out from the mouth. God's judgment came, or the, the judgment by the watchers, these angels that God has set over the region to determine leadership and rulership. They spoke that judgment over him and took the kingdom from his hands hallelujah so these angels are are there to watch over the people of god or they watch over the nations but when you understand what happened from the from the past to the present it, it, you appreciate what jesus came to do do you understand you appreciate every step that he took there were times you'd even tell them don't tell anybody until the son of man has risen it wasn't just a joke it's not a story it's more than a story Hallelujah. It's a, a well-calculated plan. The Bible says he was slain from the foundations of the world. So God planned it properly to make sure that we would not be lost in the whole battle. Hallelujah. That we would not be lost in the whole battle. The enemy wanted to make sure that you and I would not have hope. And that's what I want to tell you. The only hope for you today is in Jesus Christ. Because judgment is coming. They are playing and they are tampering with the genetic code today. They are making all kinds of animals. They are making, they are able to begin to manipulate the genetic code. And I want to tell you, judgment is not far when you begin to explore beyond where you are supposed to be. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. When you begin to tamper, I think it was China that began to, they began to tamper. They, they, they made these two kids. You see, when you can say you made a child, that's you are stepping out of the human office into the God office. And they made these two children, they said these ones will not have cancer. And they didn't tell anybody until the kids were born because the whole world would have fought against them and know that they are breaking certain, certain rules and regulations that are put on, you know, on research. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I want to tell you, judgment is not far because judgment is coming. But I want to tell you the only place of safety is in Christ Jesus. You have no chance against the devil. You have no chance against these demonic principalities except you are in Christ Jesus. And that's why he had to come. Hallelujah. There's one thing the devil does not have and he never had even as an angel. And that's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That's why I laugh at people and say, ah, we don't need the Holy Spirit. Really? <laughs> Only one thing he does not have. He had it as an angel. But one thing he does not have or he did not have is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That's why they long and they look at us. And they wonder why is God interested in man? So what is man that you are interested in him? Why have you put yourself on the inside of man? How can this God that fills the universe... Whom we can't even understand. How can he put himself in a man? Oh, hallelujah. That is the mystery. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Are you hearing me? It's not church attendance. It is Christ in you. It is not membership. It is Christ in you. It is not answering the name Christian or Christiana. It is Christ in you. 
the hope of glory. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus came. Not just to be, build big church buildings, but to put himself inside man by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the only hope I want to tell you this morning. That's the only hope. The government is going to fail you. Everything you put your hope in is going to fail you. One thing, one government that will last forever. That's why I always ask the question, where is the government of Hitler? Where are all these governments that were there at that time? And they felt that nothing could stop them. Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar, God took him from that top, made him nothing, made him like a goat to walk around and eat grass. Can you imagine a whole king that the whole world was under him at that time? Because the Bible describes him as the head of, the, uh, head of gold in the image. He had the whole world under him. A man that ruled the whole world at that time. God took him out, sent him like a goat to eat grass in the bush for seven years until he lifted up his eyes and realize that God rules in the kingdoms of men until you lift up your eyes and realize that God rules in the kingdom of men. All that you're running after is going to destroy you until you lift up your eyes. You, I don't need God. I have everything. You will die in that thing until you lift up your eyes and recognize that God will outlive you. Do you hear me? He will outlive the politics. He will outlive the political parties. He will outlive everything you're running after until you lift up your eyes and recognize that he rules in the kingdoms of men. You will continue to live like a goat and eat grass under the influence of the devil. Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet this morning. Oh, hallelujah. 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 This morning I want to pray for people who want to receive Jesus salvation and restoration i want you to come approach the altar you know in your heart that you are not connected with god you know in your heart that if jesus is to come at this time you'll be left out you'll be left out i want you to approach the altar hallelujah restoration you know that you're no longer in sync with god i always tell people don't listen to this kind of message and walk out the door that may be your death sentence. Don't listen to this kind of word and ignore it and go on. The devil may take you out because he doesn't want you to receive it again. If you know God is nudging at your heart, I want you to meet me here in the altar now. In the name of Jesus. You are not born again. You are coming to church. Mommy and daddy bring you to church. But Jesus is not in your heart. You need to come up here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm waiting. I'm waiting now. I'm going to round up. Hallelujah. Salvation, restoration. Salvation and restoration. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do you know, after Jesus reigns on earth for a thousand years, and everybody enjoys his government, the Bible says Satan will be released from the bottomless pits and will turn the nations against God. How is it possible to be ruled by God for a thousand years? and still fall under the temptation of the devil and turn against God. That's why I tell you, without Jesus, forget about it. No amount of wisdom you have, no amount of education you have can deliver you from the enemy. It takes Jesus living on inside of you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let's lift up our hands now as we pray. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. I pray no one will leave this place the same. I pray none will leave this place without knowing you as Lord and Savior. Thank you, wonderful Jesus. Holy Spirit, we thank you for this wonderful service. And we ask that you will begin to work in our hearts and bring us to a place of surrender. Bring us to a place of conviction. Bring us to a place of reality. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for choosing us. And thank you for dying for us. We give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Now that's what I call the deep weeds. And, and I love Dr. Norum, but, but he annoyed me one time. Can, can I tell you the time he annoyed me? It was a couple years ago, he taught this on a Wednesday night, and I came up to him and said, Dr. Norum, I'm not sure that I agree that those were angels. And he didn't defend himself. He just said, you'll get there. You remember that? You'll get it. 
It's like, pat me on the head right there again, man. You, you know what really makes me mad? Is I got there. <laughs> Two years ago, I'd have been squirming in my seat. But man, I, I can't wait till next week when he gets the opportunity to finish what he started this week. But God's goal is to bring restoration to this planet. And, and you brought a new revelation to my heart today that, you know, when those angelic beings fell into the daughters of men and reproduced these Herculean type people, the earth would have been completely wiped out. So what an act of mercy for God, number one, to shorten our lives because, man, how much evil can we do if we live to be a thousand years old? And then number two, God in his mercy sends a flood, which sounds like a terrible thing, because he would have been unable to redeem us. We'd be here alive today, possibly, and no hope. God wasn't having that. So I don't know where you are in your life today. And I don't know whether you feel redeemable. And, and maybe you're a child of God, and you've made some mistakes, and you know you have a purpose and you know that there's something God has called you to do, but you feel that that is so far gone that it cannot be restored, that it cannot be brought back. I'm telling you what, if God can redeem a civilization long ago that got so messed up that they were literally sleeping with the devil, he can redeem you right now. Because folks, my wife said this as Dr. Norm was saying that Jesus didn't go to preach the gospel. He went to make an announcement. She just did this. <laughs> he said he went down to the grave and said, loser. I made it. He made it, folks. God won. The battle has been won. That's all you have to do is step into your purpose. So if that's you and you say, Pastor, I have been struggling with this feeling. I've ruined my life. I've made too many mistakes. Can I tell you, you are never outside of God's reach. Just come today. Just come today. You say, I've ruined my purpose. I would have to tell you that you are wrong. I want to come and I want you to come and I'll pray with you. You say, I've ruined my purpose. I've made too many mistakes. I don't feel usable. Yes, I'm going to heaven and I thank God I'm going to heaven. I thank God that I thank God that that God saved me, but but Lord, I, I don't feel you can use me. And I'm here to tell you, you you're wrong. You're wrong. The gifts and call of God are without repentance. The moment, think about Samson. You mentioned Samson. Strong man. Messed up. Messed up with a woman. He said, he, he said it quickly. You almost didn't. He said, God put something in a woman. That's for her husband, by the way. That thing he put in the woman, that's for her husband. But for some reason, men get tripped up by it sometimes. And Samson was no exception. He got tripped up and he fell into the trap and he lost his power. But it says at the end of his life that he called on God and he said, God, if you'll use me one more time, if you'll use me one more time. And I'm here to tell you, God is not trying to get you to cause the house to collapse on you today, but he can use you. I want some ladies to come gather around this lady. But I just feel like there's a few more of you. You feel like I have destroyed my life. My life is ruined. My life is ruined. There is no restoration for me. I'm here to tell you that is from the pits of hell. God, can, I don't care if you're 99 or if you're 9. You have not ruined your life. While there's breath in your body, there is purpose. And even if you are the, in the very last season of your life, God can use you to bring change to this world if you will come and let him restore you. Jesus. Go ahead, Mike. Taking my shame in his place.
me by a new name You're taking my shame in its place You give me joy You take my morning, turn it into dancing You take my weeping, turn it my morning turn it into dancing you take my sadness turn it into joy you take my morning turn it into dancing you take my weeping turn it into laughing you take my morning turn it into dancing you take my We sing that chorus together. We sing, you bring restoration. You bring restoration. Bring restoration. Bring restoration. To my in his house so we're going to have the youth just come with us down at the pavilion um, and we curse that plague in Amen. Jesus name Amen. Amen. also on Wednesday nights we're doing a teaching on the gifts of the spirit I'm telling you what this this teaching has been ridiculously awesome if you are missing on Wednesday nights, you are missing out. Even if you're working, if you can listen to the radio while you're working, and just go ahead and, and get your phone out and 
put it on YouTube and listen as you're working. Uh, but if you're not, make sure you're here. This is just an incredible, incredible series. Also, our prayer times, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. on Wednesdays. We keep it open all the way up until service time. So if you want to join anytime after that, Friday night adoration nights, uh, they are one of the nights I get the greatest revelation that I get in anything throughout the week. Uh, if you're missing that, you're just missing out. If you're missing the fellowship events, you're missing out. And I'll close with this. Uh, I just remembered something because I came to you when I finally came to the realization that Genesis 6 was actually talking about angels falling with human women. And I told him, I said, uh, well, I've been reading some stuff and I found this verse. And, and he said, oh, you finally got it. <laughs> oh, a man does not mince words. I love it. What a gift to the church. Amen. Amen. What a gift we have when the Robinsons and the Norums and Tim and Nina and their heart for missions and, and just beyond our, our, our children's pastors, youth pastors, Donnie and Debbie, the, just the, every, everything that all of our ministers bring, uh, Pastor Bostwick and, and his wife and just, just so much. I know there's many that I miss, but this is a gifted church. Use them gifts. Amen. Send your right hand forward. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. I bless you in Jesus' name. And as we reconvene tonight and enjoy our wonderful pavilion, I'm reminded where it says you protect us with your pavilion. There's a pavilion in heaven that protects us, Lord. So we thank God for earthly things that are simply shadows of heavenly things. And Lord, we just bless these people. Help them to be safe. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you tonight.